Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called us to worship Him and Him alone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us with certain commandments to follow and that if we follow them that we'll have success and the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was the best examples for us alayhi salatu wasalam and he followed the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his commandments perfectly and his sunnah is there for us as an example alayhi salatu wasalam and one of the things from the prophetic sunnah that we can find from his example and from his uh, his commands alayhi salatu wasalam and, and all throughout the Quran but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi exhibited these things is having good manners good uh, adab with one another even when correcting one another even when dealing with ahla bid'ah the people of innovation and desires there's a certain type of mannerisms uh, there are mannerisms and there is a way in which to deal with it. Ayyul Habba, this should not be a mystery to us that Islam calls us to good manners and that Islam has us avoid extremism. The Prophet ﷺ said, Iyakum wa ghulu, beware of being extreme. Beware of, ex uh, of being extreme. Ghulu, excessiveness. And that's a part of the prophetic manners that we should follow. But in general, the Prophet Sallallahu he was asked, Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, Su'ila Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam an akthari ma yudkhul al-nas al-jannah. Qala taqullah wa husnu al-khulq. Wa su'ila an akthari ma yudkhul al-nas al-nar. Faqal al-fim wa faraj. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam was asked, what is the thing that will take us into Enter, uh, enter paradise the most. You know, what deed to do that will help us enter paradise the most? What will enter us into paradise? The Prophet said, Fearing Allah, having God consciousness, and good manners. Fearing Allah meaning what? Meaning doing His commandments, avoiding His prohibitions and good manners exhibiting the manners the prophetic manners that are exhibited in the, that are illustrated for us or or commandments in the Quran so we need to read the Quran study the Quran and look at the type of manners that we can exhibit those righteous manners being kind to parents not speaking ill to your parents being obedient to your parents hearing obeying the lead, the muslim leadership Dealing with one another as brothers and sisters in Islam and with kindness. Feeding the poor. Giving charity. Helping people with small kindnesses. Praying. All those things have to do with our adab and uh, righteous actions. And then the Prophet ﷺ was asked about those things which will enter the people into the fire the most. And he said, Al-Fem wa Faraj. Ayyu al habba the Prophet ﷺ was asked, what will enter you the fire the most? He said, the mouth and the private parts. Why the mouth and the private parts? Because your mouth from your tongue, how many sins flow from our tongue? From, speak, from ill speech. From speaking ill about one another. From lying and cheating, backbiting, slandering one another. That comes from the tongue. And cursing one another. And speaking about each other without knowledge and, and issues without knowledge. That's also from the tongue. Declaring people to be innovators without the knowledge and the right to do so. That comes from the tongue. And misguiding one another with bid'ah. That also comes from the tongue and actions. And then the second part was the faraj. The Prophet wasalam, told us that also from the faraj, from your private parts, stems sinfulness. Not meaning that 
in and of itself that our private parts are sinful. No, but if you use it for haram, for example, the person who masturbates, the person who uh, cannot control themselves, you know, from those desires come many things. People get in, watch pornography or participate in pornography. They commit adultery in, in, in fornication. All of that comes from not controlling the private parts and using them in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated. I mean that Allah knows our desires. Allah created our desires and gave us those desires. But He wants us to use them in the marital bond with the opposite sex in righteousness. Meaning the male Muslim can marry uh, the, the female Muslimah. And the uh, a Jewish or Christian woman that is chaste. That's lawful for the male Muslim. And the female Muslim, she can marry a male Muslim. That's it. She's restricted to that. And those are the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the law, putting it in lawful perspective. Letting us know that if we choose to use our private parts in an unlawful way, then we will get sin. And may Allah give us guidance and guide the ummah away from those sins which Allah hates. But if we use them in a lawful way, we will receive reward as the Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with ikhlas, with thabat. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.